Mul on väga suur hea meel kohtuda koos teiega ühe tänapäeva ühe suurema mõtleja mehega, kes on kirjutanud väga mitu bestsellerit. Nassil Nikolas Taleb. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you here. Hi, how are you? I am fine. I very much a, a, a little bit afraid uh, because I kind of feel that I have my own skin in the game now because I have heard a lot about you that uh, maybe you are not very, um, I don't know, don't like journalist, uh, journalist yeah, that but, much. But in and person, you I'm, nice, I'm nice in person. <laughs> okay, that's great. It's <laughs> intellectual, yes. <laughs> okay, but about the skin in the game. Um, why is it so important? Why are you talking about it? Uh, how did you maybe, I don't know, discover the topic okay. itself? Uh, why is it so important? So, okay, it came from trading. Uh, personally, I discovered it via trading that uh, unless people have something to lose, uh, their opinion shouldn't matter. Not because they don't have an incentive, but because there's no filtering of good people from bad people. But also on the moral side, is by reading Hammurabi's law that 3,780 years ago, something like 3,800 years ago, there was the first law for civilization was that nobody could walk away from the risks they've created for society. And that permeates the entire body of uh, legal rules and as well as moral rules. The golden rule don't do, or silver rule, don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. That's religions. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the 6th century BC to the 2nd century, there was a, a, a pretty much a universal application of that rule in all societies. Mm -hmm. But people um, often tend not to put their own skin in the game. Well, that's because, wrong. Uh, because Because we are afraid and, uh, and, uh, and we want to live uh, kind of calmly and... Uh, but and, most and, people, okay. but, 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 99% of the people you run into are calibrated, mm. okay? He has skin in the game. <laughs> Hi, the, the camera person. He has skin in the game uh, because if they make a mistake, it shows immediately. You have skin in the game in the sense that if you uh, 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 make a mistake, it will show on TV or on whatever mm. it's going to be on. But a lot of people are there in a, in a, sort of in a shadow making decisions for society and not having to pay price for it. And that is bad. And a lot of people in finance transfer risks to others. And that is bad. You have been trader, you have been a risk taker for uh, decades. Yes. Um, what is the, not to say main lesson, but, uh, but uh, if, we, if you're looking at the skin in the game, uh, what, what did you learn there? Did you put I, your own skin in the game? Yes, no? yes, yeah? of course, of course. You it was had, my own. Had I had bad years, I had tough times, I had difficult times, I had good times. And, uh, but I feel like I've lived because risk, life is risk taking. And, and uh, I, it's intense. But I also discovered skin in the game while looking at um, uh, theology. Mm. I noticed that the difference between us, according to Orthodox theology, and the God, and the God actually, is that, and before that in Greek mythology between us and the gods, is that we can suffer and they don't. Mm. So the whole idea of the Christ suffering was kind of again. And, 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 and theology has to deal with the Trinity because they couldn't make the Christ God, there's no more suffering, mm -hmm. and couldn't make him man and, and I know this is Easter, but actually for, for you people it's Easter. Yeah, it will be Easter. It will be yeah. Easter for us Orthodox the following week. But if you look at the entire body of Orthodox theology, it's about the superiority that comes from suffering, that we can suffer and God cannot. And to become equal to, he came down to meet us halfway with the personality of the Christ. So that's kind of the game. What do you think about uh, all the digital era that we have everything kind of, uh, um, we don't have to meet real people, we can uh, order everything that's, by, that, that's what, not, okay. is it? Um, there are some good things not, coming from the digital uh, uh, era, uh, like uh, distribution is improved, uh, but there's some bad things having friends online. But what has happened is actually uh, on the positive side, and let me explain. There was a phase from 1946 until 2000, before actually until 2005, before social media, 
there was that long phase in which people were subjected to passive news. Mm. And whereas historically, news, there was no newspapers. Newspapers were, were only just used at some point in France and England as a, 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 a pamphlet against the governments. Okay? The, 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 at no point in time did people receive news without conveying news. So it was, you got the news from the fish market, you got the news from the barber shop, from, and stuff like that, from, from, uh, from, uh, um, from uh, uh, condolences, you know, pay, you know, these visits. So w what happened is that we're back to that, because now on Twitter, I am a receiver of information and conveyor of information. But the discipline, and this is pretty much a hygiene you have to impose to yourself, and I impose to myself, is I'm always, always, Try never build friendship online with people without meeting them in person. Hmm. So it, it's it, so online can only work if it's a source of a real life um, activity, not a, an activity on its own. And I have met um, three collaborators in science online. Okay. Okay. Via social media, via Twitter, particularly. <laughs> I have met a lot of friends, and, and the village of origin I'm from, it's a Greek Orthodox village in Lebanon, and I, I, I have, I, I'm connecting with citizens via Facebook, but then meeting in person later. How do you write? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, is it, um, uh, you as a writer, uh, uh, um, do you feel kind of urge to write? No, no. I, I, or I, I, do, I is it walks. I try to write only when it's pleasurable. So if I'm bored with it, I stop and, take, and I come back. If it's not, it doesn't flow, this is why one, the, the most suffering I've ever had in my, in, in 30 years of writing was writing op-eds for New York Times where you have to write 800 words, all right? And, and under someone else's rules. When I write my books, I just write what's fun to write with lengths I determine myself. I try, if I am bored, I stop immediately. I don't even finish the sentence. So that's the idea, because if I'm bored, there's no reason someone should be reading me. If I'm bored writing it, they should be reading someone else. You have this interesting, uh, not theory, but practice, practice uh, more, uh, that you, uh, you're thinking about uh, 30 years before you. I, I and think if for something... a long time, yes. Yeah? You have to think for a long time before, uh, before writing about something, because you have to go very deep inside. You predicted the uh, last uh, financial crisis, 2008. I didn't predict it. No, I just kind warned of... against fragility, mm -hmm. and I mostly uh, made some income from it. Mm -hmm. okay, so which is different. I put my neck on the line, but I didn't predict. It was. It made sense that if it happened, I'd make a lot more money than if it didn't happen. That's the, the way I viewed it. So it was not a prediction. Okay, but you had a sense that something is wrong. Yeah, the sense that something was wrong and saw sense that prices didn't uh, embody the risk involved in some transactions. What is wrong now? Uh, government deficits, too much deficit, and uh, idiots in, uh, in, you know, calling for uh, Keynesian uh, methods. Hmm. But if you want to, uh, if, you, if, if you want to put your own skin in the game, what you should do uh, if, if tell you, you what feel I have. bored? I'll tell you what I, oh, what I have. Uh, I like Europe because of Germany. Okay, it's sort of stabilizing. We'll never let uh, deficits run wild. Mm -hmm. But if uh, Europe breaks up, I would invest in Germany as a currency, simply mm -hmm. because of that. I own gold against, I don't like gold, but I own it simply out of, you know, uh, I, uh, I have positions that benefit if there's collapse in, um, in bond markets, mm -hmm. particularly U.S. bond market. And uh, uh, so these are the positions I have. And I have positions that would benefit if there's a collapse in oil. Mm -hmm. So you suggest Relative to other things. Gold is a solid thing to invest. No, it's not going to make money, but it's much more solid. So that's what I have. Okay, do I have it to make money? No. Do I have to conserve value? Yes. Mm -hmm. If I lose money on gold, I don't feel guilty. If I lose money on uh, inflation, I feel, I feel stupid. I think you, you have said that uh, if you want to take a risk, uh, uh, start a business. 
Are you still yes. uh, are you still saying so? That, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, so I have I own businesses and I started businesses. And I lost money on businesses, and I will lose money on more businesses. Uh, but to me, is someone wants to help humanity. They think they help humanity by enrolling with these NGOs and going messing up some African country because they don't quite understand how the mechanism works. Uh, no, if you want to do serve humanity, go start a business. And with the money you generate, it will feed people and employ people and you'll spread the wealth. Does it matter what kind of business? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. Uh, whatever makes money, go for it. Okay. Whatever puts money in the system, creates activity in the system, go for it. Because you're going to end up feeding people. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be on a salary. You want to start a business, take the risk. That's what I tell young, young kids. Be a hero, like let's be, be a hero. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Nice meeting you.